You've reached Monster 911, and I'm Lance Hightower. I've been taking cryptid emergency calls for over five years. If you have a cryptid emergency, please call our toll-free number, 866-306-8085. I can help you. What's your emergency? Hello, everyone, and welcome to one of the most amazing shows that you'll ever hear here on Monster 911. This is Lance Hightower, and I'm so glad to be with you. I'm the cryptid podcast therapist, field investigator, expert outdoorsman, and seeker of paranormal knowledge. And I've had the immense privilege to literally interview folks from every walk of life the, uh, the five past years all over the U.S., where I allow eyewitnesses to share their personal creature experiences, and more importantly, cope with their creature encounter at the same time in a judgment-free atmosphere. And many times, many times, giving practical advice to non-lethal removal of these creatures from their property. Well, in today's show, in fact, this particular series, War with Dogman, we're going to release a new show every day for you guys. Now, this particular guest, I do remember quite well. This was the first time that he had spoken to anyone, anyone about what he was going to share with me. Because of the nature of his occupation, he was intentionally vague as to not jeopardize his job or that of his colleagues. But as you'll hear, both he and his colleagues encountered these canine creatures that we call dogmen almost on a daily basis where they worked. He stated to me, and I quote, I feel like I'm actually going to war and not work, end quote. My colleagues and I have used extreme caution on a daily basis and used much higher level of personal protection than what I had originally thought. This is what he stated to me. Of course, my jaw fell, you know, dropped open here. We had hours and hours of conversation here, but I think today's show, this show, what you're going to listen to is the one of the most terrifying, incredibly fascinating shows that you'll hear. This guest witnessed these dogman creatures, as well as his colleagues. They witnessed these creatures almost on a daily basis. Now, stay tuned for tomorrow's show, which will be a continuation of this show, The Terrifying Abilities and Characteristics of a Dogman. We'll go over it. In the end, certain things I'm not going to be able to be able to kind of say to you. I have another phone number. First off, I want to say I appreciate you taking the time to do this. I know you're busy. I'm sure you got a lot of people calling in and everything, and I appreciate that, especially at a late hour. But I have another phone number too. Oh, okay. Um, it's an encrypted number. It's they can't. Nobody can break it. I mean, unless I'm sure they could, but they wouldn't. Okay. Um, I'll give you that number. I don't know if you want me to give it to you now, just so you have it, because sure. I might call. If I ever call again, it could be on that. Okay. Um, whenever you're ready, I can. Yeah, anytime. I'm ready. Already. Um. Got it. Got Alrighty. It. Um, my <clears throat> where I'm at right now is the reception is almost none, basically. It might be going in and out at a certain point. Just let me know. Yeah, and, I'll, uh, I'll let you know if I can't hear you. I mean, it happens here sometimes. It just depends. So I understand. No problems. Okay, cool. Um, I uh, guess I could start. I, <laughs> I don't really know. This is. Um, let me start from the from the beginning here. I'm in right now. Okay. I'm not. In, I didn't. I wasn't sure. I know that you guys are out west, and I didn't. Wasn't sure if, you know, you guys would even want to deal with this or listen to this. And somebody I know who I work with, and he told me, believe it or not, he's like, and these aren't the type of guys that sit around and uh, play video games and go out and nothing against Sasquatch hunters or anything like that. I like, you know, I want to start doing that stuff too. But they're not the type of guys that would go do that stuff on their own free will. Do you, you know what I mean? Yes, I do. I I, I I know exactly the type. Yeah, they're very intense. They're very, and I, I mean, I'm sure I am too. I'm a little bit more, you know, relaxed than them, I think. I don't know. I don't know. Around all this, I don't, I don't know why. Maybe it's just we're all from different backgrounds. We all got pulled for this one thing. 
from different – These some of these guys, one of the guys from the French Foreign Legion, one of them's a Navy SEAL. I mean, this is like ex-Navy SEAL, and he just – he's doing like me. They pull all these – what you don't do, and I don't talk about this – excuse my language. Speak um, freely. You speak freely. Okay. <laughs> I, it's kind of hard. I'm around guys that cuss 24-7, and it's <laughs> – No, you try not ahead. to. But, um, you know, it's just hard to – it's just, it's weird. I mean, I, 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 the whole thing's just unbelievable. I mean, it is. I can't tell. I'm not going to say locations. Just that's just for safety. No, I understand. <laughs> not for, I mean, if I ever meet you, or you know, we talk more between me and you. You know, I, I'll tell you a lot more. Um, it's just hard. Yeah, I don't expect you to, sir. I really don't. I. I oh, I know. I, I know. Yeah. I, well, I listened to one of your shows. And I wasn't gonna do it. I, my buddy's like, "You gotta, you gotta, dude. You just gotta." And there's a couple other ones. But he tried to get out to him, and he's like, yeah, "I haven't heard anything back yet." And I guess they were talking back and forth, and it just kind of he stopped. He ended up getting moved. I think. I hope. I don't know. He's just gone. I don't know. He's gone. When he started doing that and getting on the radio and all that type of shit, gone, gone, just gone. Wow. Like, Poof. What's that? I said, wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and I mean, I, we're not allowed to have Facebook. We can't have Instagram. I haven't ever had any of this stuff. Can't have anything. Can't have a YouTube account. We can't have anything. You gotta make up fake stuff. Even if you make fake stuff, it'll last about 24 hours and they'll come up to you and be like, hey, what are you doing? You know? But, we all got pulled. I'm a little. This is weird for me. I'm not used to any of this, and trying to explain this in sequence th- here. Yeah, just just take your time. I'm. I mean, I'm just a normal guy. I, um, you know, while you're thinking there, I just tell you my background. I don't okay. have. I, I don't have a military background, but I okay. feel like my brothers and I could have done very well in the military. How we run our lives, how we conduct business. Uh, oh, my, yeah, definitely. My, my dad was kind of like military by not being in the military. He yeah. was, uh, so we, we grew up kind of strict. Uh, we grew up very rural. We grew up country in southeast Oklahoma. Um, okay. There's four of us, but three of the brothers do um, investigation and interviews. We don't do this full time. We have our um, day jobs. I'm, okay. I'm in healthcare. My other brother's in healthcare. I have another brother that is a civilian mechanic, but also served three tours as a contracted mechanic. Um, he worked on the MRAT vehicles, complete package, okay. had to present to colonels. And so, and then our other member is a professional coyote caller, and he had an experience with a dogman. He called one in in 2013 with a special call. He makes his own calls, and this particular call he made, he called one in. So our drive with what we do is we interview people, we try to give some closure and some calm to the storm of what they saw and explain what they saw and how these things think. And in the meantime, what we do is we intentionally go out into these areas that people have had sightings to call it in, to call them in. And we we want to get personally with us, we want to get footage, we don't want to cause a war or anything. We're not out to intentionally hunt, but we, oh, yeah. but we we know firearms, we know calibers, we know ballistics. We have special loads we use. We know our site acquisition exactly. Everybody has their site acquisition. We have contingency yeah. plans. So we we don't talk a lot about that on our show, but we're just um, guys. This is what we do. We enjoy it, and we enjoy talking to people, and if we can help in any way, we, we try. And if we can't, yeah. then we can't. We'll tell them, but we at least try to have them share with us because they're not crazy, uh, they're not alone, and they're very sane, and 99% of the individuals we talk to are just good people, hardworking people, and they saw something that scared the living out of them. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> that's I mean, that's great. You're that's I. Out of everybody I've listened to, I haven't listened to a lot, but your show, the one 
I think this happened not too long ago. Guy, I think this might have been one of your last episodes. The guy, something about a dog man. They tried to take his computer. Oh yeah, Richard. Yep, in yeah. Florida. Yeah, I listened to that, and that's. I'm like, well, you know, this guy seems like he, he knows it, and he. Uh, I heard you said you got brothers and stuff, and um, I'm like, you know, and he doesn't seem like he's crying or trying to attack or call you dumb or you know stuff like that or try to just you know make a name for himself and i appreciate that you know definitely oh yeah well you can tell i mean you don't have to meet no people for years if you're around people all the time i guarantee you you can know if someone is yep you can tell in seconds and that's a turnoff oh definitely and where we grew up so rural and country that oh yeah i i i I like talking to people like Richard and yeah. and uh, other people that are just good guys, they're hardworking guys, they just are honest as the day is long, they're patriotic, yep. and they just, you know, they want to be, they want answers and they want to be left alone. You mind your business, I mind mine, and we're, we're good to go. Exactly. Uh, exactly. And that's basically, I mean, I grew up, I grew up in, but it was like, a little bit towards, I guess I'm, I'm an hour from, an hour from, mountains are very close. Oh yeah, beautiful. Yeah, and yeah, very pretty area, and I grew up out there, so I, I know where you're coming from with that. I'm very big on, besides, you know, just, not, but just being raised a certain way, you know, similar to you, like you said, with your father and everything, just a respect thing, I think, but. There's a lot. I've listened to a couple other shows, like the bullshit type of it, and I'm listening to it, and I'm like, I swear I've heard the same exact story like four times from four different people, twisted a tiny little bit, you know? Yeah, that's the thing, is that um, with our show, when we got this started, the whole purpose of why we got a show started was mainly for therapy for us. Yeah, because oh, we yeah. we had had a collective experience. My brother Lane had a Bigfoot uh, chase the truck that him and his buddy was in, only wow. about four miles west of where we grew up in Oklahoma. Wow! And that changed his life. I mean, it yeah. really did. It not only oh, scared it. out of him, but he didn't tell me for two years, and I was kind of said he didn't even share it with me. I I've heard the story a million times and he's not once changed any detail of what he told me yep and, i mean my brother that's a great example i mean my brother's a and he's a uh he's a, well, actually as of today he got uh what is that promoted or whatever they do and uh he um he was telling one second can you, can you hold on one second i'm sorry yeah no problem no problem i'm at work and i'm <laughs> i'm i'm by myself but i'm trying to one second yeah, no worries. Excuse me. Sorry about that. I'm trying to... I got cameras and shit all over the place here. I'm basically in a little shed about 8 by 8. That's like 30 feet up and up. Oh, 30 wow. 30 feet up. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah you you uh, don't worry about me. You break whenever you want. You, you're you're the you're the guy on on point here, so you break whenever. You're not... You, you I can't appreciate hurt, that. You cannot hurt our feelings, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I just don't, you know, I'm trying to be as respectful as I can. I know you guys. No, no, yeah, you, you do what you time, need to but, do. Uh, yeah, my brother, he um, he actually never believed in any of this. I never did. And I told him this, and he was telling me, he's like, you know, I don't know if I believe and this and that. And I said, well, he's kind of making fun of me almost, and this is my brother. And uh, he felt terrible after because he couldn't help himself. He had to drive out there. In this place, I mean, you're going to be stopped. You're going to be even. You're not even be able to get to the house before you get stopped. I mean, there's gates. I mean, this guy's paying a lot of money. He's in the. He wants his family safe. He's already paranoid. He's definitely a target. I mean, if this guy didn't have this stuff, he'd definitely be dead. I mean, that's a guarantee. That being said, my brother. He's a so he starts his stuff, and he had an encounter similar to that, actually, to where, but it, he's like, were you in a werewolf costume? That's what he told me. He calls me afterwards, and I heard about it, you know, I came through over the radio and everything, that there was a down there. 
turned around and took off, stopped, and then just peeled out. Well, that was my brother. He's like, are you, he's like, are you with me? I said, what, what are you, what are you, what are you talking about? What'd you see it? I said, now you know. And you know that I'm not crazy and this and that. And he's like, that, he didn't believe it and this and that. And the more he thought about it, he's like, there's no way a human. He's like, at first I glanced at it. It hit the side of his, hit the side of the, not hard, didn't make any marks, nothing. It just hit the side, a very distinct noise. Dang. And you know, this isn't gravel or anything on a perfectly paved road, just freshly paved. It isn't bumpy. I mean, you know, he knew right. what it was and he seen it in the corner. In the corner of his eye, he looked right at it, and he's probably like five feet away from it, and turned and just gunned it out of there. And he's like, you know, and when I think about it, he ended up going back in the daytime. He's like, this was eight feet tall. <laughs> I said, yeah. He's like, the more I th- you know, I thought maybe they playing a prank or this and that. We used to always play pranks on each other, but he should know. And the, the more he thought about it, you know, this is where I'm working at the area. Why would I do that? You know, that'd be dumb. Why would I put on a werewolf costume when I'm, hey, let me put down my AR-15 real fast and throw this fucking werewolf costume on and run around with the other werewolves around here. Exactly. The fuck they are. <laughs> exactly. Hope to not get killed. And, I mean, these things can die. I mean, other people are, I heard a couple people on radios say, they can't die. There's yeah. not a gun big enough. Let me tell you right now, they can die. I mean, they have some guys. You know, I mean, I've, I've done a, a decent amount of tours, and, you know, I don't brag. I don't, I'm a, I don't go out of my way. I don't, you know, I've done whole tours. I've had, the reason I stopped, I got blown up, and, and I was just, believe it or not, I wasn't even there on no, I ended up taking, I left the Mideast, and I ended up doing, for, not themselves, but for, FBI, whoever, DEA, and I would go down there, and I learn everything there is to learn about me and a group of other guys, Spanish, what they like to eat, what their, I mean, I know the whole crew, I'll know how many gold teeth he has in his mouth, everything, you know, and those people are dangerous, that's what people don't get, it doesn't, it's not very hard, right now I could jump in my vehicle and drive down to Mexico and be there in about, if I drove all through the night. I'd be there in, you know, a decent amount of time. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't, it wouldn't take me two weeks. It wouldn't take me, you know, a week. I mean, it might take a week, depending on your vehicle and everything like that, which way you go. But terrorists aren't going to get in a plane, fly over here, and hunt you down and use as many resources and throw out hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars to kill you. Cartels will because they're just f***ing twisted people, bad people. I mean, he's satanic. That's what people don't get. They're real into, like, Satanism and shit. Really? They don't, you know, you'll catch, you'll go through villages and see them, like, crawling on their knees and shit, which is real. I've heard other people know that now. They put it in, like, movies and shit. Wow. Oh, oh, they're just sick. They will come and extinguish your entire family because you stopped three kilos of cocaine from going into wherever. Wow. They will come and do it. They'll cut your bloodline. They call it blood cutting. They cut your bloodline completely clean and then leave you there, just sitting in the middle. Like, ha! And now you get to live the rest of your life, or you could kill yourself, take the easy way out, you know. But and that being said, I have, I can't believe I'm even saying this right now. I do have and a wife. Me and the wife, you know, she 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 understands, you know, what I do for a living. And she knows I'm not a bullshit. When, she, when we met, we actually, believe it or not, went to high school together, all that crap. I ended up coming back to that area before I left to go to Afghanistan, ran into her. We ended up talking, talking, you know. So she knows me very, very well. She's been with me the entire time. So all the tours, all the bullshit, getting blown up, shot, all that crap, dying. She, so she knows that when I'm serious and I tell her, that we just killed three fucking werewolves last night, not last night, but over a period of three days, two that I know for a fact, one that we're not sure, I mean, seen it get shot in the head and everything and fall over, but then by the time they got there, it was gone, which is weird. But two, and then the fact that all this weird shit starts, and she didn't believe me at first, so I just dropped it right there. 
and I started not eating. Still haven't been eating because and that's the thing people don't get. I do have PTSD. Yeah, it exists, but I don't have it as bad as most people, I don't think. I do have it bad, but not as bad as most guys. And, I, and the only reason for that is when I went into all this from when I was 18 years old and I knew this is what I want to do, I prepared myself, okay, I've been hunting my whole life. This is how I am. I wasn't raised playing video games. My parents weren't sensitive. You know, mm-hmm. this is how this is how I am. So I know I can kill somebody and sleep like a baby. If you're a bad guy, I will fucking rip your guts out. I have no problem doing that. The things that keep me up are like children getting hurt, you know. Mm. You see like that. I mean, just horrific things, especially involving kids. That bothers me very, very bad. But I'm sure it does. The werewolves and dogmen are right there. I mean, you've hit on something that's a high point. What I did not expect is that when I started talking to these people, they had as real as PTSD as someone. It, it's different, of course, in the war, yeah. in the war scene, and when you doing some of the that you're doing and how dangerous it's been. But these yeah. people, that your average Joe and Joette out there, the civilian, when they see these things, they are in severe PTSD. Oh, I mean, yeah. I they cannot, it. they they lose bowel function, they cannot sleep, they start taking yep. drugs, they turn to alcohol, and they wow. can't, the problem is, is they can't turn to anybody. And That's I did, the thing, yeah. Yeah, and I did not expect this. So we're on a mission to find these people, let them know that I'm not ever going to give a name if they don't yeah. want it. I just want to try and help them and say, look. You're not crazy. These things do exist. I know for yeah. a fact they exist. I don't care a, what anyone else says, they do. Yeah. That's a great thing, too. I mean, the fact that you're doing that. I can tell. I can just tell. I mean, I've done enough. That doesn't even have anything to do with it. You do your you know, psychology classes they make you go through and some very intense ones where, you know, you hear stories about people like going through the training where they break your fingers and shit like that. Right. Culture. That's just real. When you when you do that with a you're with Navy, I mean, that stuff's real, you know? The fact that, I don't know, the fact that you do that and you do all this crap and then the, you see something like this, this creature, and that can give the same exact effect to the point now that instead of ducking, <clears throat> instead of when I go into a restaurant with my family, I'm, I automatically there's a lot of people yeah i start getting a little weird i'm only carrying a gun regardless knife whatever i always have one on me a knife and a gun more than one you know not i'm not an asshole i don't carry around three big 44 magnums you know i'm not a, <laughs> right. one of them i'm trying to act like the toughest guy in the world but i'm gonna live you know i'm not gonna I already i know people are after me i've been told that it's a very big half thing this adds on to, <laughs> to everything Right, and everybody's got a breaking point, and I'm—I'll be the first to admit I've had my ass kicked plenty of times. I'm not trying to act like I'm the biggest tough guy. I know there's guys out there tougher, you know. But this, I, I, right now, I would take the toughest guy I know who actually passed away. I would take him, and I know he would react to that. There's no way, and there, I would take him and make him see that, and then a week later see how he acts how he acts you know and i guarantee you instead of looking for snipers at the window he's gonna be looking for the dog <laughs> for the dog man that's what i'm doing that's what i'm doing i'm going home instead of like you know i go into a restaurant i put my back against the wall stuff like that i'm, I'm that stuff's secondary now i'm looking around i'm with my I'm going somewhere, you know, around a wooded area, and I'm a huge outdoorsman. I've done survival training. I mean, I trained lots of survival. That's the thing. I've been in desert survival, mountain survival, different climates, a tropical, subterranean. I mean, everything. I trained these people because that was like my forte. That and camouflage. That was like my two things that I trained people a lot in. And you know, that comes together with the sniper school and everything. But I've never seen anything like that. You know. That's the thing is that Wiley on our team, he's a professional. I mean, he got paid by ranchers with a lot of money to go out and take out the coyotes, right? He did that for 30 years. And he said, Lance, I have been on my belly. We night hunt. 
that's yeah. a, we night hunt and he said lance night hunt you know and i didn't i was all new to it he said we get on our belly and i call in on the ground and we know how to have a light projected up in the sky and you yeah. can light them up and then you bring it down slightly and you see that reflection he said i never knew in a million years had i known that anything like this existed my ass would have been in my truck yep <laughs> yeah yeah i mean yeah that's I love to camp, and that's the, and just like he said, laying down. And I mean, there's been times I've been in a ghillie suit for a day without moving, barely, just sitting there. I've seen deer. I've been I've had a deer walk over top of me. Actually, <laughs> never seen anything. Not a bigfoot. Not weird noises. And this, I mean, it's just I don't know. It's mind blowing, beyond mind blowing, especially when people tell you your whole life. This isn't true. This isn't true. These are fake. These are all stories. This is bullshit. Mm-hmm. There might be a Bigfoot. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, obviously there is. But there's no werewolves. I mean, that's bullshit, you know. Well, I've come to believe this now in the last couple of years. There's a hell of a lot more than Bigfoot and Dogmen out there. And anything that is considered folklore or wives' yeah. tale... Let me tell you, it had to arrive from derive from something, and there's some truth in there somewhere. Exactly. That's the thing. The fact, I mean, there's lots of facts. The thing that really, where I realized, okay, this is real. This is going on right now. This is happening. This is what I'm seeing. These things are real. I've seen how they move. We know, like, we're using special ammo now. I mean, this is ridiculous. I mean, I'm, I make my own ammo for my red bull. And, uh, not my battle rifle, but my, I guess it'd be a sniper rifle to anyone else. And I make my own, you know, my own, my own bullets, everything. And we're to the point, I'm making like titanium bullets, titanium 762s. I mean, this is titanium. And people are like, oh, wow, you know, the whole point, no, no, no. You know, titanium, we need something that's going to stay the same shape while it goes through. That's right. I try to explain that to a couple like hunters and different people and they don't listen to me. And then I have all points in my 45. Okay, well, take those out because they're not going to fucking do shit. That thing will keep coming. You shoot in the head. It does, you can shoot a grizzly bear and that's what blows my mind. People are like, I don't understand. You can shoot a grizzly bear with a 357 magnum from seven feet away in the skull. 90% of the time it's going to die. There's lots of, there's still that 10% chance that that skull is technically thick enough to where it could stop that fucking bullet. And it has happened, you know. It stopped. They've had grizzly bears stop 44 magnums, their skulls, from 30 yards away. And so, why couldn't there be something? I, that thing would annihilate a grizzly bear. I mean, that's what Dave said. That's why the rounds that work, the rounds that we use, we're using AP rounds pushing 3,600 to 3,800 feet a second. That's what I was gonna. That's what I was gonna say. Something at least over 3,800 feet per second for something for this. Where if know? it grazes it, it's it's hurt. Yeah. Something traveling that fast, that velocity, when it hits something, it's going to explode. Yep, and it's gonna hurt. I mean, there's guys on my team now. Now we have, we can. I have grenades. I have this. This. These. You know, these that would be considered anybody else. In fact, I, I got pulled over about a week ago, and I'm on my way to work, to this place. I don't even call it work anymore. It's not a job. It's it's survival. When we go there, it is survival. If I, I mean, it's like a war. It's turning into like a war, literally. I mean, they're like, we're briefing ourselves before we go out there, and we start walking around this huge ranch, basically, walking around the woods and wherever, where I'm at right now, up in the honey nest, they call it. They, we're preparing to, you know, we don't go out anymore without groups of three. There's no more single people besides the guy where I'm at right now. There's no more, you know, and I can hit a button and turn on what it is. There's all these buttons up here. If I hit different ones, different lights come on, you know. Mm-hmm. There's motion-activated things. I have a screen. I can see... Okay, someone motivated, activated that. Now, one of my guys will right now, before they even go to that area, they'll be like, I'm, I'm, I'm walking through there. So, you know, so I know. Or whoever, whoever's up here. And we don't, I mean, it's... You there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm sorry. I, no, no worries. Damn phone. But, uh, 
Yeah, I mean, it's just... <laughs> can you... What do you do? I mean, my yeah. one buddy's to the point... I mean, this guy, he's feeling... I shouldn't say buddy. We all kind of have to be buddies, you know. When you're put into these high-tense situations, people don't get that. Like, oh, how do you... How do you bond with these team members and stuff? Well, you get a group of people and put them in the most in terrible situation of your life where you feel like you're going to die, where you believe you were going to die, and you make it out of there, you're very close with them people. It doesn't matter if you just Absolutely. Met them. Absolutely. If you put your life in another man's hand, you yeah. he's not just a buddy, he's a comrade. And yeah, you, there's mean, no more, yeah, it doesn't matter if I could just meet you, if me and you, say me and you, just met each other. We don't know, you know, we know what we've talked about, we meet, and Okay, blah, 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 and we go out in the woods, and we get massively attacked by, I don't know, 20 of these things. One of them. And, I mean, and it's really coming at us. It's psychologically f***ing with us because I've realized that these things are smart. That's People don't understand. I mean, I have spent a lot of hours studying these interviews, and... Uh... I'm telling you, people think, well, they're they're not human. Well, of course they're not human, but don't give them the intelligence of a coyote. Coyotes, exactly. if you can if you can fit if you can fool a coyote, you're you are a crafty son of a gun. Yep. I mean, exactly. You you this thing okay, and then make it three times smarter. Now yeah. what do you got? You got a dog. You got something like a soldier coming at you. Exactly. You have the perfect weapon. And that's what we were saying. We we're like, this is the perfect weapon. Something that I've seen one of these things. There's a 22 foot fence. Okay, at this one section. Now this is near the kids of this guy. This is where his kids play, and it's almost like they're locked in a prison. I mean, it's pretty sad, but you know. And he he didn't do any of this. I just want to clarify. He didn't do any of this because of dogmen at all. None of these precautions put here were for dogmen. If they were, then whoever did it's a fucking, excuse my language, a retard, because these things scour the fucking 22-foot fences with barbed wire on them. Scour it like it's, a, it's like they're doing it for fun. When you <laughs> like, say scour, I mean, are they, they're going over it? They're going over this thing. Up this, this, this fence, okay? And it is a chain-link fence, which is a bad idea on his part, but it's a chain-link fence. They climb up over it, and they get to the top. Now, I didn't believe this at first until I seen it. I seen the footage from it, and we have so much footage. I could show you footage, and you'll be like, holy shit. If we send this out, we're dead. Someone's going to come kill us. They're not going to let us send this shit out. Some videos of dogmen looking at us, moving around, us putting lasers on it from 20 feet away, and having to chase the laser. Oh, all kinds of just like a dog. And then, I don't know, last for about two seconds. So, that thing, if you take a laser... And they'll react to that just like a dog. Or just really? Like a cat. Yeah. Yep. Any so, color laser or just like a red dot? Or we had. See, that's the thing. They have to. Dogs don't see color. They say. Right. These have to see color. I know they do because we had a green and a red laser, and they reacted to both of them. Is it right? I mean, that in its eyes, obviously, this thing is going to have way more. I believe that it's not color blind because you know. Look at it. I've wondered, too, if they it. can see infrared. Can they see that's infrared? What, that's that's what we want to know. That's what we want to... We have infrared lasers, and we've been trying to, like... This guy, we've been trying to, like, figure out a way to take something like infrared and put it somewhere to where we can film it and then see if it reacts. Well, put, fuck, we'll put dead animals around it and see if it picks it up and see if it... If if it hurts his eyes, anything. All you, know? you need to do is just go get you a Bass Pro game camera that has infrared on it for less than a hundred yeah. bucks and set it out there on a well-known part of the fence. And if you don't see anything that triggers, I mean, if it doesn't get around, because a lot of guys will try to say, yeah, I'm going to buy a bunch of cameras. And I said, it's worthless. They said, why? Yeah. I said, there's something in the rods and cones of its eye. It can see that. Otherwise, yeah. everybody would have thousands of these pictures. And, exactly. they, and they don't. They don't. Yep, you're exactly right. That's that's the thing. That's the thing. It really pisses me. See, this is I'm to the point now that I'm I'm not the typical guy that's gonna nothing against anyone. I don't want to come across, you know, like I'm not trying to call other guys pussies or anything like that. But it, I don't care who you are. It throws you in a funk when like a black SUV comes up and these dudes jump out. You have no idea who they are. That, now to a normal person automatically you're going to think cops, you know. 
uh-huh. federal law enforcement. Oh, is there a drug bust? Is there right? But when you're do- when you're doing this to dudes like me, who can have who's standing there with police officers, and I'm tacked tacked out beyond belief with a fucking machine gun with other dudes, and you guys, I mean, when I mean ballsy, I mean like he made the biggest mistake by grabbing my chest rig. He like grabbed my chest rig, like made a fucking fist and like crunched my, he like, you know, grabbed on and was holding on real tight. And that lasted about two seconds because he was laying on his back. And I said, don't fucking touch me. And he's like, well, you're going to give me everything and blah, blah, blah. They wanted everything. They wanted this. They wanted our guns. They wanted, uh, we got a scope. You know, those. Who did they scope. think you guys were? I don't know. That's the thing. How the f***? You got some juice. If you come up to us, when we have licenses and shit, when we're basically pardoned, literally pardoned from certain things and certain activities, and this isn't, you know, hires us. This isn't, you know, civilian where even the state police took us. This isn't. So you got some fucking balls or you're just stupid to come up to us. And the fact that they've been doing certain things like I overheard the one guy say some kind of noise. Well, we have attack dogs. Obviously, we're going to have dogs there. The dogs react to these dogmen, but the only way they they don't they're not vicious, nothing. And these are high quality Doberman pinchers. We got one Rottweiler, three Doberman pinchers, and that's it. We're going to get some more, but for right now, the owner that's all we want. These dogs are trained. They, I could throw them up on fences, nail climb fences too. Not as high, you know, not like a dog man, but. You know, you've seen the videos, I'm sure you've seen videos of, like, pit bulls and stuff hanging from trees, and dogs yes. can do that stuff. When you get dogs like that, <clears throat> that I can speak three different languages to, that will not eat, you can, you could literally, I could hand you a steak, and you could wiggle it in front of its face, it won't eat it. Will not eat it. Not until I say it's okay to eat it. Because that's just in case someone poison them. That's how they're trained. These dogs turn into psychos. Psychos. You would never even know what the... You wouldn't know what kind of dog. I mean, you would you would look at it and be like, "This dog's trained. Trained for what?" <laughs> I mean, to put their head down, pissing themselves, shooting themselves. It's, I mean, flying around, hitting their head off the wall, trying to get away from me, freaking out. I mean, it's ridiculous, ridiculous. And there's an electric fence that's around this whole area, and we found one of the dogs we heard, and they all have trackers on them, mm-hmm. so I can see where they're at all the time. And they, uh, one was dragged, I wasn't there for this, but one was dragged across the electric fence. There's a couple electric fences through this guy's entire ranch, and different dogs, you send them through there. You have to walk the dog to these areas, to where the electric fences are. So the kids' play area, there's an electric fence there. But it's only around the kids' play area, so i got to walk the dog there. Something dragged the dog through each one of them, each of the areas, every time I'd go through the area, I'd get zapped, picked it up, and laid it. It's still alive. It's still alive to this day, which is amazing. Didn't really hurt it, but picked it up and laid it in between the Y of a tree. That was probably like 15 feet off the ground with no limbs around it. Climbed up there and just, I'm going to lay, get myself wedged in between this fucking tree. And when I mean wedged, wedged, they had to take an axe to get this fucking dog out. I mean, it was ridiculous. I heard about this the next day. When I went there the next day, I went to the spot. And you could see claw marks in the tree. I mean, everything. Claw marks. <laughs> so much evidence. Mm-hmm. Sickening. Pictures. I've heard that these, these dog men have an affinity, some type of bond with, there's on, there's been, I've, I've interviewed a couple people coyote. that has, inter, they have some type of association with coyotes. They've seen yeah. them more than one occasion and there's some association with just canines in general uh, yeah. I, I i can't figure it out i don't know what that bond is if it's just canine to canine or if there's a an intention a purpose because i know these things think oh yeah yeah they're smart very very smart they taunt they that's the thing people don't i don't think people were understanding at first that my situation to where one there's two of them, but they were basically mind fucking me. That's what they were doing. They're just scaring the living shit out of me without doing anything. And the one waved. I swear to God, it waved. I swear to God, it waved. 
And really? Said, no, yeah, now it's waving. Blah, blah, blah. He said, I'm telling you, if they can tap on windows, listen to it, the, then it waves. And it wasn't like a wave, like, hey, you know, but you could tell it waves. I mean, four days later, another guy comes up. He looks at me, his face is pale white. I said, you're all right. He climbed up to where I'm at right now. There's like coffee and stuff in here. And he comes up here and he's like, oh, I don't think I am. I said, what? And he opens the latch. And when you open the latch, you can basically, if you weren't careful, you could fall way, all the way down to the bottom. It's a ladder. The ladder can be pulled up. It's on these big posts. Well, here, he threw up <laughs> oh, down man. the hole. While he was up there, like two minutes after he got up there, he's sitting there and he looks at me and we're just staring at each other. These blank looks. Finally, I'm like, are you all right? And he's like, no, dude, I don't think I am. And he throws up. And he looks back at me. He's like, everything I thought I knew is completely fucking flipped. Mm. He's like, I don't know what's real. He's like, am I going to see a unicorn tonight? I said, why? He goes, yeah, they wave. <laughs> I said, see? I said, you seen it. And he told me what happened. I mean, it wasn't really a situation that was intense or anything like that. He was standing on the trail. He's actually opening up an MRE, believe it or not. <laughs> and he, or that or he just opened it up or something like that. He's fiddling with it. And he heard a noise 20, 30 feet away. He looks. First he scanned with the night vision. 90% of the time, it's not like that's what people, well, no one really knows. My wife, I was trying to tell, what people don't get is that we're not, the pe people that live in the house, like the, the wife, the kids, they're always like, well, you guys should carry flashlights around. We do carry flashlights, but why don't you guys have flashlights? How do you see? Well, we have night vision. Yeah, but shouldn't you carry flashlights around so we can see so we know where you guys are at? Well, why would you? And, and I, you know, I'm starting to think to myself, well, maybe she's nervous thinking like one of these guys is like looking in their window, you know? Right. But their windows are 13 feet off the ground. And it's straight brick. The first floor window. So it's, this house is made for the reason of, you know, hard to get in, hard to get out, bulletproof. I mean, this guy put a lot of money in here. And, wow. Oh, yeah. My old night and the guy, he's up there in the military. I mean, he's up there. And uh, she's like, why don't you carry flashlights around? I'm not going to – that goes against everything I've ever been trained. Walk around the pitch black woods with a big, bright flashlight so everything can see me and I can't see a thing. Yeah, so no. So when someone comes to kill you and we're actually – you're doing our jobs, and I'm walking around with a fucking flashlight because your daughter's scared because she keeps seeing a guy in the corner of the yard or whatever. Well, no Tell her that it's the same guy who <laughs> plays football with her. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, plays catch with her. And, and it's the same dude that sits with her when you're in that pretty vehicle and walks with her in the classroom every morning and waits out in the hallway. It's the same dude. Like, tell her that. Oh, because if those people do come, I won't be able to see anything because I'm fucking walking around with a flashlight, number one. My eyes are not going to be able to... You can't adjust your eyes that fast from an LED flashlight to dark, you know? No, no. I can look what happens when the light, the people do come to kill them and they shoot me because I didn't see them and they're standing right behind me, you know? Right. And that's the thing, and it's just... I don't know, this whole thing is freaking can you, out. Do you mind <laughs> if you could... Do you mind if just kind of, uh, you know, I, I, and I understand you can't give certain details, so if I ask something, it's okay. You can just tell me I can't give that information. What, yeah. how, how are you called, I mean, where you're at right now, how how did you get there? What, was there, was there information that said there, we got this weird going on and you didn't know what to expect and you went, or did it? Oh, no, 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 this, this house just got built. This is just all, this is fresh. It's all fresh construction, everything. This certain person in the military, he's up there, you know, he's got wife and kids and stuff like that. He, people try to kill him many times. So they bought this plot of land, and he's from this area, so of course he wanted to stay here instead of being smart and moving somewhere. I mean, you can get, where we're at right now is really far out, but still... Wouldn't you want to go like the Rocky Mountains if you're that? Anyways, but oh, I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah. But anyways, we just built this place. I'm still hurt from something that happened not too long, like probably a year ago, and uh, I actually passed away. Believe it or not, and 
obviously I'm fine, but so I needed something that was a lot less intensive for when I'm getting back into it, you know, something that's easy going. Never did the bodyguard stuff before. I was always in war, period. Conflicts, everywhere I've ever gone was a conflict. There was no, you know, they were going to send you over here, like, just send people to bases, Japan, wherever. No, no, no. You're sending me for one specific thing, that is to or retrieve something or whatever. So that being said, I all hemmed up, hurt, and everything, and need to work still. I'm like, what the f*** am I going to do? What am I going to do? This is all I know. Even become a f***er, like every, my f*** and everyone, why don't you be why don't you be a f***? Well, still, I have to go through the training because it's kind of dumb like that. You know, they flip it. It doesn't matter if you're a Navy SEAL. If you get out, if you want to be a you still have to go through the academy. All that. Right. I can understand the academy. But the training, the physical training, like, what? <laughs> I should be teaching the fucking instructor. Are you kidding me? That's like taking yeah. someone with a PhD and having them start in kindergarten all over again. Yeah, exactly. And it's and that's frustrating. And I refuse to do that because, I mean, I walked in. Okay, I'll take that back. I went for, like, an orientation thing at this. It was the only place that had the I go there. He begs me. We get there and all this. And he's a. He, um, you know, he's like showing me everything. And the instructor was older than me. Not by much. Probably. He's probably 35. I'll be soon. So he wasn't too, too old for me. And regardless of my age, I have many of people in my resume shows it. Four-star generals will even say it too, and I have them because of this. You know, I've spent a lot of time with these guys, and when you're with Navy SEALs and stuff, you you know you're going to meet these people. They're going to know you. They're going to hear about you. They're going to. That being said, I everything that the guy was saying, like with the guns and everything, was like less than a quarter of what I learned. Everything that they learn over the past however long it takes. I could cram all that together and literally learn that in probably a week. I literally probably did learn that in a week. I learned more in a week than they learned. I mean, the he was saying it was just so f***ing dumb. Excuse my, no. excuse me. It was just stupid. You're not going to tell me uh, just the. And you got all these young kids. They're sitting there. Their eyes are real big. They're thinking that they're f***ing badasses. You know, I'm going to be going through this. And then here, these f***ing idiots. They did a tear gas test or pepper spray, it wasn't even tear gas, and they're spraying it, and they spray this one kid, and he's like flying around, like, man, and pepper spray, really? Pepper? <laughs> I'm thinking to myself, like, what the f*** am I doing? This Yahoo's going to teach me how to do hand-to-hand combat when I taught guys that know more than him. You know what I mean? It's very hard for me to sit there. Well, you're, okay, you're right. What the f*** does that have to do with it? <laughs> yeah, but you're, they must have died four times, and I'm probably the only ever with a Purple Heart given to me by the military. Don't f***ing come at You know, I just, it's to the point, I just, I hate that. So that being said, I'm sorry, I start rambling. That. You've experienced a lifetime of events for, sh- for such a short time, and your wisdom, your experiences go up exponentially. So to go back down to a level, it's like yeah. uh, you can't do it. There's no way you can right. listen to when you, yeah. you've, you've got a Ph.D. in wisdom. You can't do it. it. Exactly. And, I, you know, I'm not the type to blog or anything like that. I mean, I, but I know what I'm good at is what I'm good at. And this, and what I like and what I'm good at is all one, it's, <laughs> if that makes sense. And, that, and I'm very, 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 very good at that. That's what I eat, sleep. That's what I think about. And, I mean, I even have to, this is terrible. This is something that I have to live with, you know. I love my kids to death, but sometimes I wish that I was out there. I mean, it's true. I never thought I'd say that. Guys used to say that when I was younger, growing up. This is more like a family thing. Like sure. My father did this. My grandfather, he's a Green Beret. He started doing it. My uncle is a Navy SEAL. He got me into it. My cousin, he's my age. He actually just passed away in Iraq not too long ago. He got killed. But, I mean, it's a whole family thing. That'd be like me taking you or you going to, like, a seminar <laughs> and having them say, 
Okay, everything you know is bullshit. Let's start from the beginning. So we know that dogmen are um, are real, you know, like that. You know, mm-hmm. no I mean, it's <laughs> stupid, but I uh, ended up taking, they asked me, they said, hey, my own buddy's like, hey, this is right up your alley. You sit there in a crow's nest, you got, you know, you got a rifle, you go around, he's like, they throw huge parties there, he's going on and on and on and on. That's how I got to I see. the spot. So tell me, if you don't mind, some of the things that you've learned from watching these creatures. I mean, this is what I'm... Uh, I, I, I mean, I know more than the average person, but yeah. you've had direct experience. And I, I mean, can you give me an estimation of how big they are as far as weight? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we all know this had it. We, this is what we've been doing. We have a big cattle... I don't know too much about farming. I, you know, I got farmers in my family, but a big cattle, I guess they weigh cattle on it. We're trying to get it on to this. I mean, it's to that point that we're that, I don't want to say cocky, but it's true. They're here. They're, they're, if we can pull them in that easy, I could throw a, I'll tell you how easy it is. I could take a stake right now, put it on a piece of rope, slide it down there, and hang it. And I guarantee you in the next, by, the, by morning, the whole rope will be either gone, chewed off, or I'll just hear it. I'll hear it, or I'll hear a little noise and see the rope moving just a tiny little bit. And then I'll open the door, bang. It's so quick. We've had times that we've done this where we hang things and we're all up there. And by the time we shut the door, we hear a rustle, we open up the thing, it's gone. It's gone. Just, and the rope's just swinging. Swinging. Torn right off. But me personally, this, these things have to, they have to weigh 